the more you play, the more I wonder. Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. On this story mode dungeon, we finally have the first official entrance of the scale suit. We already did see the lizard men back when we did our first endless mode run. But now we'll see them for real. Curses, managering is not too bad. Cooldown times may seem onerous if you really think you'll be using your weapon abilities or artifacts a lot, but since artifacts have limited use, it's not usually a problem, and weapon abilities can be a bit finicky. Ultimately, good dodging and blocking is going to be best for you. Last Man Standing is kind of the same. If you're used to fighting bosses anyhow, just dodge out of the way. The suit of scales are represented by these lizard men. Quiet, patient, lethally subtle and coldly intelligent. Of all the creatures I have incarnated as suits, these please me the most. And they are definitely quite dangerous. I'm still going to do recommended equipment and encounter deck. With a quick glance. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Before I get out of this menu, I wanted to briefly show the Ratmen are still here. It's going to be a while before we can deal with them. Unless we're lucky. This card right here, calling the Ratmen, is what will start it. We'll see if we run into it. I uh, might not get lucky. We're still doing soldiers training as per the thread vote. And let's jump right in. You have taken one of my symbols, but now we begin to play in earnest. My scepter is at stake, and I do not intend to lose it. Scales. I have saved the Lizardmen for now, but the stakes have been raised. There is no weapon I will not use against you. As you mentioned, this here is our latest MacGuffin. Let's grab it. Choose from these options. I'll admit, I'm always kind of happy to see Twisted Canyon. Now, this is an interesting choice. Lizardmen are deadly enough that I would consider the axe to be a fair weapon to use. Huge Hammer definitely has a pretty good damage output, and you do increase damage, which is fantastic. And the Force Explosion is not nothing, so I am going to take the Huge Hammer. But a faster weapon is definitely not a bad idea against these. Are you sure that's the right approach? But I'm feeling a little ballsy. An innocent moment. Never to be repeated. Except here, where all of your history repeats itself until time immemorial has passed. Now that's an interesting comment on the part of the dealer which kind of hints at the game we're playing here, especially since he's made that comment before. Let's just help. Useful. Ooh, he's right about that. Uh, Lizard Eater is is the blessing that really interacts well with lizardmen. As you can see on the right, receive one food for every lizard killed. If we fight a lot of lizardmen on the way, we might be set until the very end of this dungeon, unless we die.
but this is a bit of a shit show. So I'll just take whatever I can get. Which is a combat. Shouldn't be too hard. Thing about the combat you may have noticed that sometimes i don't just bash a shield in but i actually go around the enemy in a slight dodge parry move unfortunately there are no invincibility frames so just be mindful of that sometimes you don't go as far as you expect it is yours you can take it Roaming ever forward, hunting for the truth. Eh, I was hoping to unlock something, but we'll just go on. I appreciate your efforts. I worked hard on this game. It is a pleasure to see you play. A ship at dock is worth nothing until it sails. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Welcome to why I don't like Mr. Lionel. We haven't seen one of these yet. Sometimes there are dungeons you can walk around in your char with your character. There's no real combat here, but there are traps that will drain your health, like this. And they're a bit too slow. And they're too. You can dodge all of these. Or just wait your turn. But you want to pick up gold. And you might notice, there's not a lot of gold here. Breaking open these jars will not really do anything. And you can't actually really break them. They just go around because physics. That's right. We picked up nine gold. This has happened before. Um, I don't know to what degree this dungeon that gets randomized. I've had more gold before, but we've exited the dungeon and Mr. Lionel wants all 50 gold, as you're about to find out. And you need to get 50 gold to unlock the next step in this card chain. So we're going to do this, and we're going to do it as best as we can. Um, with any luck, I'll see you in a bit.
Oh, there we go. Four runs through, 63 gold, and we've finally done it. Now, if you're like me, and you sometimes fat finger your key presses, or you stop playing for a couple days sometimes, and you get back into it, uh, it's easy to make mistakes. And if your movement speed is slow, you might get hit by traps as well. It's not unfair, just a little tedious. But it certainly sets the tone for what goblins are. Annoying as heck. That's the last time we've got to do that one. Kind of. I bet you're thrilled to see Jack again. Oh boy. Yeah, yes I am. Though horribly thrilled. This is where I am really regretting picking up the mace. But the crowds demand entertainment. And friendly fire, apparently, which is good for me. And they don't always give you food. This could also sometimes happen. I don't see it often, but going to a next area will sometimes get you hurt. Lizard men is good though, since we could always use a bit more food. And with any luck, they will hurt themselves on all the traps, making my life easier. I've shown it off before, sometimes in sped up segments, but if you can master the use of traps in your environment, it is fantastic to help pick off the enemies. A little extra health, but it is only a momentary respite. What brings you to play the game? Ha, I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. Poor Jack. His place is so much lower than ours. He merely repeats the same motions over and over, incapable of change. I'm greedy. I'll freely admit, I'm greedy. Especially because gold or food could be useful on this run. I haven't really had any yet. But as a soldier, we have a difficult life. Ooh, yeah. Nasty. Well, let's just deal with them. At least we have the mace for the skulls. As I completely failed to notice that this is a highly trapped room. Uh, yeah, don't be me right now. Pay closer attention to your surroundings. And just a reminder, I am not the best at this game. I am not the best at this combat. Sometimes I do find it a little bit janky, but 
I could stand to improve. You can do better than I do. But this is exactly why we came here. For that. Cut them where it counts, then finish them. Let's give this a shot. I do like the damage from the mace, but um, I don't tend to use its effect that much. I sometimes forget about it. And I could stand to go a little faster in my attacks after having my ass kicked in all those trapped areas. Plus, it'll give me a chance to show off the weakening curse. An expedition. Press on. Sure. I don't feel lucky anymore. Did you expect me to tell your fortune? No. A fortune teller is at their most base and despicable when they begin to believe their own lies. Of course, I am different. My powers are genuine. Mm. In this case, I don't know that I need anything revealed, but... <sighs> Either way, I'm going to run into it. So in this case... Even if it got me extra equipment, I'm not too badly off. And still no gold. As I say, still no gold, I ask for food. A little food. Not a great change, but enough to switch the odds a little. At their heart, all games are about power, are they not? The acquiring of power, the retaining so of power. While he talks, I'm going to mention something quickly. A couple videos ago, in my first Endless Mode run, I took the opportunity to buy off a curse that uh, got rid of some gold, little amount of gold for every uh, 15 or so health I had remaining at the end of combat. Somebody in the thread mentioned, well, why would you do that? It's not a really huge curse. And right now, I am actually favoring food over gold, even though I haven't actually had any real gold since the start of this dungeon. And the guy in the thread is right. When I do have gold and when I have curses, I like to buy them off in case there are any interactions. But gold is not always necessary. It's useful. And had I had it at various merchants, I could have bought more equipment. I could have bought trinkets. But I am still doing fine. There are going to be encounters that give me that give me equipment, that give me food, and as long as I have those, gold is minor. So with curses, your opinion may vary. Take your time if you like. I've waited long enough. Oh shush, I'm moving on already. See? The stores are taunting me, but I can't really do much unless I sell my equipment. And I don't have too much to sell. I do have two, three weapons. I could sell two, but I want to keep one in backup, just in case. You begin to see the nature of the questions we will ask. Do we look to the past or to the future? Is your decision predetermined or made in the moment? All right, let's show off our new weapon here. Here we skip. Life's limb. Let's weaken these suckers. Oh, it is. The difference just 
in having a sword is beautiful. Like, I don't even care right now that I'm getting poisoned. I am dodging so much more easily. And yeah, the artifact recharge time, the weapon recharge time is slightly annoying. But even just one youth was great. Our lives are often lived thus, are they not? Pushed back and forth by the whims of nobility or power. This is a slap in the face. If you're like me and you don't have a lot of luck with gold on many runs, you're going to run into Culling the Ratmen. Which is the card I mentioned before you need to solve to actually start getting rid of the Ratmen locked in your deck. It requires 50 gold. On my endless mode run, I quickly jumped above that, but I never encountered the card. And in this case, I've had zero gold, and this is going to just sit there taunting me. I've had many runs where the card taunted me in past saves. But what can you do? Uh, you keep it in there to keep trying to unlock it. As with other games like these. Also, he kind of insults us. It's not like I don't want to pay him. I'm just poor. There's a token in it for you if you win. A fate which has bad luck is the worst for the Minotaur, um, the White Minotaur DLC encounters, since you need a lot of successes. I don't feel very lucky. worked out this time. Do you understand what it is we do now? Or did I rush you through the rules, pushing you into the play before you were prepared? made that a little too powerful. I will have to rebalance that next time. Take it. see the end of this, or another set of stairs. 
The lizard men are nothing if not patient. He waits for you. Uh, Mr. Lionel, you shafted us earlier with your nice little dungeon. But we could give you some food and see what happens. And we get food. Not a bad trade, unless this is the last floor, in which case... Well, still a win. Yeah, that sword really paid off. Me picking the hammer at the beginning was not the best for my playstyle. At least not if there aren't a whole lot of skeletons around. Ah. Well, maybe the food from Mr. Lionel uh, is useful after all. A choice. Select your desire. Uh, maybe. Another curse <laughs> on the table. Okay. Let us see how you Well, it. I'm I'm not too worried about this this run. Of all the curses to get, I think that is the least threatening to date. At its heart, these traveling shows are but mockeries of the true mysteries. Devil's Carnival is an interesting card. It has different chance events consecutively and each combination of chance events has a different outcome you you want the best possible one but that doesn't mean the other ones are bad let's see what we get here we are in a strange carnival getting even why we came here Such a shame. Even with an initial success, it brought us to four other possible outcomes. And unfortunately, it wasn't good for us. 16 total outcomes. But only one will give us this token. Maybe another time. Didn't mean to do that. I'll skip ahead. Do not let your supplies run so short. You are on risky ground. Another card that needs gold. Now, a fight for the ages. I expect greatness. And with one gold to spare and 95 health, we have the Jack of Scales. Win this and claim my token. Uh, 
Well, that was a nice little visual bug at the top left. As you can see, sometimes the combat isn't too nice. I am trying to break to break their shield block, but apparently I am not in the right position to do anything, or more than likely, um, I just need to wait for them to try to attack me because their guard is just that good. But they are annoying creatures. They block so damn much and you need to wait for them to either attack either attack and whiff or block to really get any serious headway and that tail is just kicking my butt Well played indeed. You have defeated something that I never expected to die. There we go. We've got the scepter. MacGuffin number two. We get a few things out of it. You can read them here. But just to summarize, more equipment at start, more food at start, and better starting gear, which is always good, especially since we'll fight stronger and stronger encounters. But... Ratmen, bandits, and lizard men all get stronger. And it's not done by a long shot. The wand represents my will in the purest sense. It is not too late for you to give up now. Go peacefully to your fate and leave me to mine. You begin to assemble a credible deck. Let us see what happens next. Halfway done. Let us continue. There we go. As he states, we've gotten through half of the court. Before we move on to the next of our court, we'll go ahead and uh, give another endless run a shot. This time with a different fate to show slightly different gameplay. I will see you next time on Let's Play Hand of Fate.